Hi everyone! I have a very short lecture video for you today on this first pretty much half of Annihilation. I will be talking about parts 1, 2, and 3, and I'll be focused on parts 2 and 3. So I want to go through it like we would go through any work of fiction. I want to look briefly at the plot, the characters, the setting, the point of view, any symbolism that we can find, and then talk a little bit about finding the theme of this novel. This lecture will probably introduce more questions than answers because I want you guys to think about these ideas that I'm giving you and then bring them with you when we get to the discussion forum at the end of the week. Okay, so I'm going to go chapter by chapter or part by part. And so starting with the first part, which is called initiation, I thought it was important to look at the definition of the term initiation. You'll see I have two dictionary definitions on here. The first is initiation is the act of admitting someone into a secret or obscure group, usually with a ritual. The second definition I have here is the action of beginning something, right? So we can consider this first section of the book as the beginning, right? This is their initiation into Area X. But I also think that first definition gives us some clue into what might be going on here. There seems to be, as we get through the book, a lot of things that these expedition members were not clued into. Perhaps the psychologist knows more. But it is almost like being inducted into a secret group. And there are some elements of ritual, right? So I want you to look for, in the first chapter especially, the elements of ritual that you see. I wanted to call your attention to the first line of the novel, the tower, which is not supposed to be there, right? I think that's such an interesting way to begin the novel. It's not saying, I see the tower on the horizon. It's actually a tower that's buried below ground. And it's not that the person is seeing the tower, but that they are acknowledging that it's not supposed to be there. So this is the first hint that all of the information that we may think we know is probably wrong. After that moment, we see the characters become more and more initiated into Area X. So again, I want you to look back. What steps are they taking into Area X, and how could it be seen as a ritual of sorts? There's hypnotism. There's the black boxes. There's setting up at base camp. There's maps and guides. And then also, I want you to look at how the characters specifically are initiated into the area. So continuing with the plot, part two is called integration. And again, I have this definition here for you, this dictionary definition. Integration is the act of integrating, and integrating is combining one thing with another so they become whole. And I think it's a great guiding idea for this second part. In the first part, she has inhaled the spores. And in the second part, we have the biologist questioning whether this is affecting her and how it might be affecting her. She feels like her senses are heightened and that she's perceiving things that other characters are not. Part two also brings a sudden change in the situation. The anthropologist is gone. The psychologist's answer to why she is gone is confusing and doesn't really make sense. And then we've got the part where they go back to the tower. And the biologist feels that the tower is a living being. Meanwhile, the surveyor doesn't see any of the things that she's seeing. The biologist sees the tower breathing, right? She can feel it. She thinks of it as a living being. She looks at the surveyor and she sees that corona, a glowing crown around her. In this chapter, we also learn about her past. Um, we learn about her husband and his death and how the rest of his expedition died of cancer. We learn about her previous field work, her work as an environmental activist. And though the rules of Area X do not become clear, we do find that the Southern Reach, the organization that sent them there, was not actually preparing them for anything they thought that lay in Area X. We are introduced to the mysteries. We see the brain tissue in the crawler's sample that she gathers. And then later we see her try the hypnotic cue on the surveyor, and we see the surveyor acknowledging how useless all their equipment is and how outdated it is. 
all of these elements demonstrate both the juxtaposition between what we thought and what we're learning, and they also show us how this environment is unlike any they've encountered before, and how whatever they're supposed to be doing, it might not actually be what they think they're supposed to be doing. Of course, that critical moment in part two is the moment when they find the anthropologist's body. This shows us that nothing is as it appears, and it shows us that the psychologist is not who she appears to be either. All of these elements are working together in that integration, right? Whether she's becoming an actual part of Area X, all of the facts of their existence are combining together to create the reality that they are living in. Okay, and so our third part of the book is immolation. And that word is defined as the act of being killed or offered for sacrifice. And I think that's a really interesting word choice for this part of the book. And I think it's a good question to ask, who is being sacrificed in this instance? The expedition is completely split up. The anthropologist we know is dead. The psychologist is missing. And the surveyor and the biologist do not see eye to eye on anything. Then about midway through the chapter, as the biologist is traveling to the lighthouse, she has a kind of revelation. When she's thinking of all of the material that the Southern Reach organization gave to her and her group, she says, I am convinced now that I and the rest of the expedition were given access to these records for the simple reason that for certain kinds of classified information, it did not matter what we knew or didn't know. There was only one logical conclusion. Experience told our superiors that few, if any, of us would be coming back. So perhaps the title of this section indicates that their whole group is a sacrifice, or that the act of going to Area X is a sacrifice. Over her journey to the lighthouse, we see more of the kind of strange elements that make Area X different from the rest of the world. She sees that old village with the mounds that look like people, and she sees the dolphin with the human eye. Once she reach the, reaches the lighthouse, I think the narrative brings in so many more questions for us. She finds the picture with the lighthouse keeper in it, and then she finds so much violence inside of the lighthouse, which contradicts things that she thought to be true about the different expeditions. And finally, she finds the mound of journals. I think that moment is such an important part where she is absolutely certain that whatever she thought she knew is not real. So I want you to think back on this chapter and think who or what is being sacrificed? Why might that be the guiding idea for this part of the novel? Moving on from the plot, I just want to pose some questions for you as you move through the book. So in terms of characters and point of view, I want you to think about how does the biologist observe the world? We can see she's often using that filter of taxonomy and categorization when she's looking at the various unknown quantities that she examines. And how does this clash with the other members of the expedition? Do you believe her record of the events in this novel? Are there any elements of it that seem untrue? Furthermore, do you think the crawler is a character? Is the crawler the antagonist? Or are the psychologist and the surveyor antagonists? Or are all of these antagonists? Or is the protagonist antagonist relationship go beyond just these individual characters? I do want to say that the bonus question on the quiz, the answer is Southern Reach. That's the name of the organization that sent them there which is a kind of character, though one that we can't see and don't know that much about. For the setting, here are some questions to consider. What are the rules of Area X? How does it operate like our world? And how is it dissimilar from our world? Does the biologist's awe at its beauty tell us anything? And could that beauty be hiding something? What about the locations where she has conducted field research? Are any of those similar to Area X, and how? I think that there's often a sense of remoteness in the areas that we see, and there's always a whole bunch of the natural world. Why is that significant to this novel? 
And then finally, the other two physical locations we have are the lighthouse and the tower. How are they similar and how are they different? In a way, they both spiral up and down, and they're almost like inverted versions of one another. So it's just something to consider in this novel. We can also look at the writer's use of symbolism. There are some important objects that don't really mean what we think they mean. The world is unlike one we've ever seen before, and some of the elements that are both a part of the story do seem to be showing us something else as well. For example, the black boxes. What might those represent? Winding staircases. How are those significant? We know that the outdated weapons are practically impractical, but could they demonstrate anything else? We've also got the journals, right? We go from each individual has their own journal, there have been 12 expeditions, and suddenly we have this mound of journals. What might that show us? And then finally, the lighthouse and the towers can be symbols in their own right. What might they represent? Finally, I want to wrap this up, but when we're looking at theme, right, I don't want to make any pronouncements like, this is the theme of the novel, especially not at this point, and I really want to see what some of your reactions are before I force you to think any one way about it. So in order to kind of guide you toward finding theme, I'd ask you to consider how the following ideas are approached in this novel. How does the novel approach the idea of change? What changes? Why does it change? How does it change? How does it affect everyone? Also, there's the idea of colonization. So many of you pointed out that great quote from chapter one that says, desolation colonizes you. And if you notice, colonization is used several times throughout the narrative. And I wanted to point out that often many different types of fungi live in colonies, right? They don't live as individual spores, but rather they collect. Right? So I think that's kind of significant to this narrative. I also want you to consider the idea of humanity versus nature. And then when I wrote that, I thought, but also nature versus humanity. I think that when we switch them, it changes our point of view on the topic. Right? So those are all things I want you to consider when trying to identify theme. And so hopefully in our discussion board, we can have a little bit uh, more conversation about that, because I like to hear what your reactions are. Okay, that's the end for now. Hopefully you aren't bored out of your mind by this lecture. I took this screen still from the movie. I hope that we get to all watch it. I'm trying to figure out a way that we can. In the meantime, keep reading. I'll see you on the discussion board. And don't forget about the quiz. Good luck.